Okay, in this final section of part one, let's just do a couple of little tidbits just for the joy of it. Um, for example, a uh, standard result that one learns that if you take a number and multiply it by 10, I guess I'm doing this in base 10 now, uh, you just uh, put a zero at the end, 2730. Um, is that obvious? Well, on a 10 1 machine, maybe it is. I mean, let me just explain this to be very clear. So if I had the number 273, and I'm not going to draw the dots, I have two dots in the hundreds place, seven dots in the tens place, and three in the one dots, I say, just multiply everything by 10. Well, yep, I would indeed get 20 dots in the hundreds place, 70 dots in the tens place, and 30 dots in the ones place. So the answer is 20 hundred, 70 t, 30 t, t, whatever you want to say that. Well, okay. Most people don't allow me to say 20 hundreds, 70 tens, and 30 ones, but you know, there's some explosions going on. For, exact, for, for example, these 20 dots would explode. This is a nice multiple of 10. So it's not surprising it's multiple 10, we just made it be multiple 10. Two explosions make two dots over yonder. 2,070 t, 30 t, t. But of course, seven dots here, uh, so 70 dots here, seven explosions make seven dots here, each explosion makes one. 2,730 t, t. Well, some more explosions. Three explosions makes three dots here, 2,730, and of course we've got zero dots left over. So in effect, we've just moved everything over one place and put a zero at the end. So as you can see, multiplication by 10 in base 10 just adends a zero. And if I was to write numbers in base 5 for some reason, choose to multiply things by base 5, I bet you could argue exactly the same way and prove that multiplication by 5 in base 5 just plops a zero on the end. Alright, so that's, that wasn't too hard, that wasn't too bad. Um, but let me do something that's kind of unusual that maybe you haven't seen before, because you probably have seen this, no doubt. So here's a really cool divisibility rule for the number 9. So I'll do a very just basic example and I'll give a hint of how it goes and you can think about further details. Let's do 21203 divided by 9. By the way, do you remember the name of that symbol? I think I mentioned it a few lectures ago. It begins with an O, that, not that division symbol. I guess most people call it a division symbol. But actually it's called an obelisk. All right, what's 21203? Well, here's a strange rule. Look at the first number, just write it down. Look at the second two numbers, two and one, add them together and I get a three. Look at the first three numbers, add up the first three. Two, one, two adds up to five. Uh, two, one, two, and the next number, add that is zero. So a five plus zero is another five. And then two, one, two, zero, and add that was eight. And I'll write just R eight. Oh, that's it. The answer is two, three, five, five with a remainder of eight. Whoa, whoa, what did I just do? Hang on. I claim to divide a number by nine, read the number from left to right and work out the partial sums. Two, two plus one is three. 2 plus 1 plus 2 is 5, 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 0 is 5, 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 0 plus 3 is 8. String them down and just write them down in order, but the last one's going to be remainder, whatever that last answer is. Ever seen that rule for 9 before? So, um, let's see if I can get a sense of what it is. So I'll, uh, as I said, I'll leave the full details up to you to think about. But think about 9 in a funny way. We can think of 9 as actually in a 10 1 machine. Oh, hang on. Let's, let's draw it. Let's draw it. Blah, blah, blah. 2, 1, 2, 0, 3. 2, 1, 2, 0, 3. So we're in a 10, 1 machine. Uh, in a 10, 1 machine, there's the number 2, 1, 2, 0, 3, and we're dividing by 9. Now, what does 9 look like? 9 looks like 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm looking for groups of 9 in that. But let me be funky. I could also think of 9 as 10 and negative 1. So maybe I should look for dot antidots in this picture. All right, now if I do that, maybe you can see what's going on, why I'm just adding up the digits from left to right. Because what I'd really like to do, if we're gonna play this game here, do I see any dot anti-dots in this picture right now? No, I don't. But what I'd like to do is have two anti-dots here to counteract the two solid dots here. I'd love to have this and this, in which case I'd better put two solid dots to counteract them. Now I've just found two at the level I want. But what I've done now is I've added some solid dots to this picture. How many solid dots did I add? I added how many dots were there? Two, so now I've got three dots in this problem. Well, I want dot anti-dots. Wouldn't it be nice to have three anti-dots here? And let me add three dots to this next picture. There is actually three of what I wanted. Oh, now I've got five of these guys. Wouldn't it be nice to have five anti-dots there, which could better be balanced with five actual dots. So I've now got five at that level. Wouldn't it be grand if I had five anti-dots here to balance, it better be balanced with five more actual dots. So I have another five at that level. And that leaves me eight behind. Can you kind of see now what I've really been doing is just adding up, adding up, adding up, adding up, adding up as I go along? So think about that. 
So lots of these strange tricks in arithmetic can actually be seen and explained in the dots and boxes model. I admit this is somewhat peculiar and I'm, I'm being hazy on the details deliberately, but um, mull on these things. So when you see someone do some clever weird trick of some kind of this, of this nature, I bet dots and boxes can actually save the, save the day. So I've got a few little puzzles out there in this remaining section of the part one of the course, and then part two of the course will keep going because there's these things called decimals. Now deci is a word for meaning 10, but we know we can do dots and boxes in any base we like, so maybe we should do exmals. All right, see you in part two. Thanks.